Oh, come on, I did something right. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So good morning, welcome to the PowerShell Summit. Yeah! yeah. Um, so this morning we're gonna start off with, uh, yeah, I know what the thing says, it says deploying PowerShell Web Access with DSC, and that's what I'm gonna do, but that's not really what this is about. <coughs> what this is about, I'm gonna make it up as I go. No, what it's really about is the decision process I went through to make a configuration in DSC. In other words, what did I have to do to get a configuration to work? Insert your own goal here. I happen to do PowerShell Web Access because, well, I like PowerShell Web Access. Um, and I actually have a customer that had a particular issue, so I needed to do this for real. And I sat down to do my configuration. Now, this is going to be kind of a discussion. I'm going to talk about that in a second. First of all, I, I think I have to show you this, um, who I am. My name's Jason. Um, yeah. And what did, oh yeah, this is a discussion. So I'm going to show you the way I thought about the problem. But it'd be really cool if you interject how maybe you're thinking about solving the problem, stuff like that. Um, so, <laughs> you know, everybody keeps asking me about finger puppets, sir, and I, I didn't bring any, so I. <laughs> so as I'm talking about this, just kind of, th kind of just shout out if you have a, a different idea or a different way to think about this. Because when I sat down to do this, I mean, this is, this is really new, especially if you've been working with the V5 preview, who, anybody working with the February V5? Okay, awesome. Things are changing rapidly in the DSC space, right? Microsoft is, is moving really fast, and so a lot of things are changing. On Wednesday, we're gonna talk about best practices, and one of the things about best practices with DSC is what was, what was the best practice yesterday may not be the best practice today because it's evolving so quick. So when I was thinking about solving this particular problem of, of getting PowerShell Web Access set up with DSC, I was trying to do my best. And you might not think that it is the best, so give your opinions as we go along. Um, and like I said, replace PowerShell Web Access with, other, with whatever your target goal is. I'm an IT guy, and so this is how I kind of thought about this problem. So let me just kind of start off by showing you the uh, setup here real quick. I've got um, a domain controller, and I've got a test server, server S1, that we're going to slam a config to. You with me? I'm not doing a pull server or anything like that simply because that is unnecessary for this demonstration. What I want to do, though, is I want to show you, um, I've got a little script out here that I did not run yet, I don't think, that does a little setup for me. So I just, I didn't want it there to be any kind of like black magic going on. So I just want to show you, uh, I'm going to add in a, uh, uh, a DNS record. Here's what I want at the end. And this is what the customer wanted as well. They want PowerShell Web Access, but they don't want the default option. So they don't want it to be off the default website with slash PSWA. Neither do I. I'm an IIS guy that sucks. What I want is I want my own website. And in this case, it's going to be called, I forgot. I think it's just PSWA. Yeah, it's going to be PSWA, and it's going to be company.com. Yes? Mm -hmm. it needs to be secured, have a certificate, all that kind of good stuff. So I just wanted to create a, a, a DNS record for that, and I'm going to do that. And I have some uh, uh, resources that I'm going to show you that I'm going to copy to my uh, authoring box, which is my domain controller is where I'm doing all my authoring. So let me just kind of uh, execute that. And it'll copy all my stuff. Hopefully it did it correctly. Not like I tested anything. Um, also, I, I, because um, I'm not doing a pull server or anything, I'm going to also just copy out and guys, I'll give you all the code. Um, I'm going to copy out the uh, resources um, that I have to server S1. And I'm also going to copy out the certificate and install the certificate. I didn't want to deal with the certificate stuff in this short presentation. So I'm just putting a certificate out there. It's a real certificate, by the way. So it's not like a self-signed one. I got a real one. Oh, come on. Be, be, be proud. Be impressed. <laughs> I did a nice certificate. No, don't do that. That's a, so here we go. Um, first of all, uh, I want to modify the, uh, um, whoops, yeah. <laughs> I've only got two neurons, so <laughs> um, the local configuration manager. Um, the only reason I'm making a modification, because I'm just going to do a, a push to it, um, I'm <coughs> modifying it to debug mode all, which, if you come on Wednesday, you're talking about, you probably hear, hear you talk about here. Something in the, the V5 stuff so that it refreshes your resources as you're working with them and editing them. Um, so I'm just going to send that out real quick um, to him, and you'll see that, ta-da, oh, hey, it worked. That's, 
Okay, that's not the fun part. Sounds so surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's my code, so I, I, I am. Uh, <laughs> um, so now let me uh, go into the config. So here's what I had as a problem. I want to, you guys know if you work with PowerShell Web Access, if you just install PowerShell Web Access, first of all, this is not complicated. Most people wouldn't even think about doing a configuration for this because you're not going to have like a thousand of these things. You're going to have one or two of them right in the load balance, and that's about it. So, you know, you run a couple of commandlets, you're done. But here's where the, 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 the problem started to arise. So the customer said to me, he said, yeah, you know, we can install PowerShell Web Access, but the problem is this. It's getting installed on a box that has a lot of websites on it. Okay, so what's the big deal? Well, the other guys that are playing with that box sometimes remove components or make configuration changes to IIS and they screw things up. So we want a configuration so that there's no drift. Oh, okay, I get that. So this is what started this process of, trying to, of me trying to do a configuration for it. Now, if you work with PSWA, you know that you have to have IIS installed. Now, PSWA, when you install it, it installs IIS for you. But see, that's, I don't want to rely on that because people can go through and uninstall components. So I need a configuration that's going to install IIS. Well, IIS has a default installation where it installs a several role services. Well, I don't want that because those could be uninstalled too. So I want to make sure exactly in my brain everything that I need is getting installed. So what I did is I created a configuration. Now, I've got some parameters here. We'll talk about the parameters and we'll get to it, but I want to just want to show you. And I'm going to talk about these resources in a second. So I went through, and I just used the built-in Windows feature resource to start installing the roles. Now, I started out with IIS Web Server. That's going to install a whole bunch of things. I went through and manually then also added every single thing that it installs plus the additional components I needed for PowerShell Web Access. Like um, you'll see down here. So I went through and did every single thing. That way, if somebody removes that component, it gets fixed. So they can't screw this thing up. And you know things like uh, um, the uh, uh, .NET extensions, ASP.NET um, 4.5 that we need, all of that stuff I put in. And you'd say to yourself at this point, well, that's not so hard. And it's not. The IIS part, there's nothing special. So this took like five minutes, done, awesome. And my brain was pretty happy. Now all I have to do is install the feature for PowerShell Web Access. Well, that's not hard either. I want you to take a note though of a couple of things that are really important that you're gonna start seeing. You, you probably notice it in every single one of my see the pens on? Gotta make sure you use the pens on that things are going to be installed in the sequence that you want. It doesn't matter the sequence that you wrote it in. It matters what's in depends on because you never know what's going to happen. So you want to make sure you get, you'll see that I get really anal about my depends on here, making sure that certain things are done before the next thing gets done. And in this case, well, there's the Windows feature, PowerShell Web Access, piece of cake. If you've installed this before, you know then that there's a commandlet that installs the web app and you're done. Well. I don't want to use the default installation. So here's what I did. You're going to notice something weird here. See this? See website? See. See? See. Now that I want to work with the website, I needed to use a different resource. This is where I went and got the X web administration. Because I don't know if any of you played with X web administration. Great resource. Doesn't quite work yet for a lot of things, like a secured website. <coughs> so I talked to my buddy Dave, Dave Wyatt, and the C web administration does work really well for secured websites. So I grabbed the community resource. So I had to do a little bit of research, right? And to find a custom resource that would work just peachy keen for me. So what I did is I first stopped the default website. I don't want that guy running at all. And then I needed to well, I, did I mention that I'm, I, I'm a web guy? It's not something I'm really proud of because it's not like a sexy thing, but like SharePoint or something like that. But I mean, IIS is kind of cool, right? Well, here's what I want to do is I want to create my own website, which means I need my own application pool and I need to assign permissions for that application pool. Well, I created my own app pool with my own app pool settings. Okay, you don't look impressed, but I thought this was pretty cool. It is. Because here's, here's the thing is that when we're done, you go out and delete that app pool, it comes right back. I like that. So nobody's going to screw this app pool up. Then 
Here's the tricky part. I needed to give that app pool permissions to the special top secret website that is PowerShell Web Access. I don't know if you noticed this or if you, if you played with this before, but when you install PowerShell Web Access under Windows Web PowerShell Web Access, there is a special authorization file. This is, by the way, when we set up the authorization rules on who's allowed to use this, oh, yeah. this is where those rules go. The application pool must have permissions to this. If you use the default install, it automatically takes care of this for you. If you don't, if you make it yourself, you have to do it. So here's what I had to do. I had to install permissions. Yeah. Can, can you specify what security context the app pool runs under? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, I think I did up here, right? I think I gave it um, application pool identity for its identity type. So absolutely, absolutely. Um, here's the tricky part. I couldn't figure out a way to set NTFS permissions. I know how I used to do it in my scripts. As a matter of fact, I put it in here. Um, I used to do it with um, iCackles or whatever. I think I put it up. Yeah, there it is. That's how I used to do it in my scripts. But I'm, I've got a DSC config, and I don't know how to do NTFS permissions. So I do some more research. And I found a resource somebody had written. So with the research, how are you, you know, like some of these resources, I'm like, ah, oh, where am I gonna find this stuff? And Well, know. now here's the best part. The, the good news is, is we've got the PowerShell gallery. Mm -hmm. So you got that, you can go out to, you can download the DSC resource kit. Assuming you're running five. So, yeah, you can, yeah, you can do that from your machine if you're running five, or if you have four, you can, you know, download the zip file. And you can look at all, there's like 180 some odd resources out there right now. This resource that I'm using wasn't one of them. So here's how I did the research. I opened up my favorite search engine and put in NT, DSC NTFS permissions. And I found this resource. Now I gotta be honest with you, this resource is pretty cool. It's not called C NTFS permissions. I'm editing the resource, so I'm gonna make it a community one as soon as the author says, the original author says, okie dokie. <laughs> Um, he did a really good job by using .NET to set NTFS permissions. There are some mistakes in it though, so I, I need to fix some of those. But I got this to work where I could set, using this resource, I, I, I did the syntax on it, looked at the resource, figured out what it needed, and it basically it needed a directory and who and what. Oh, come on. Yeah! Because now I can set application pool permissions all in my config. If somebody goes out and screws this up, I'm still good. Maybe talk about how to use the community to, to investigate some, like best sources. Oh, um, well, what did I say? I said we, we, we've got, first Repeat of all. the question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. PowerShell.org, first of all, you can uh, always go to the forums in PowerShell.org. You've got a tremendous amount of people that will help you from the community. Like I did, like I said, I, I actually put something up for Dave Wyatt, helped me out with the C web administration one. Um, you've got the PowerShell gallery, right, that you guys have seen that you can get your resources from. You've got, oh, by the way, there's a, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but there's this guy that actually invented the product that did a DSC MVA video series on the Microsoft Virtual Academy. And what an awesome resource that is, by the way, to help you find other resources and do all that kind of stuff. So is that what you were going after? Was yeah, it? and also Twitter's actually pretty good Dope, for, yeah. for uh, getting pointers. It's crappy for asking support, you know, oh, detail, yeah. detail, how do I do it? <laughs> but like, it's really good. Does anyone know where I can find this and passing around links? Yeah, I, and, and an active that, community. Yeah, the, the, you know, you guys know this. We, we have one of the most powerful communities <clears throat> of people trying to help everybody. And right now with DSC, we're, we're all hands helping each other, right? So Twitter is definitely one of my favorite places to start off with, and also the uh, forums at, at PowerShell.org. Now that we have um, community resources that are open sourced on GitHub, this is going to get a lot more fun and a lot more thrilling here real quick. So, um, so anyways, I got permissions because I found the resource. I figured it out. It took about, oh, about 20 minutes to figure out how to use this particular resource. It took me about 20 minutes, right? So it would probably take you about five, but it took me about 20 minutes to figure it out. Then, now that I got an application pool, I got my permissions, I need to create a website. I need a secured website, right? HTTPS. So I have the certificate on the box. And here's how I set it up. It wasn't easy to figure this out. Now, there is sample code for this in the X web administration and the C web administration. If you look at the, the help information, there's sample code that looks very similar to this. But take a look at what I'm doing. I'm gonna make sure that this is present. 
I'm going to create, this is going to be one of the parameters that I pass to it when I execute this, what the website name is going to be, which is just going to be, in my case, PSWA. Um, the physical path, which is to that um, uh, PowerShell Web Access, the WW root, that's where the top secret magical website is uh, for PowerShell Web Access. Um, the binding info is the tricky part. Now, it doesn't look that tricky now, but it was kind of tricky for me to kind of figure out. There, this is in some of the samples, by the way. Um, so I, I'm using the C-Web uh, resource, so it's PowerShell org, uh, C-Web binding info, protocol, HTTPS, port that I wanted, the host name, because I'm going to use this as a host name header. The host name for the website is going to be whatever website I passed in, and I did hard code in this case, company.com, but that domain could be a parameter as well. Thumbprint, certificate thumbprint. I'm going to show you the line of code. I'm going to go check the machine for its current thumbprint. Now, I'm going to do a, a certificate management config later on. I, but in my brain, certificate management is totally separate in my brain from this website. So I didn't do any certificate management here. That's why it's already installed. But I need that thumbprint to get it assigned to that um, little dooter. And it's in the store, my store. And you can see I've got my depends on, making sure everything's done before it gets there to the website. And now, go ahead. So this PSH org C web binding info, that's a, a nested config? It's nested in the C website. Um, X web administration in its X website has the exact same thing, only it's MSFT. So yeah, in uh, the uh, C, the community resource, we just renamed it. Um, here's where things get tricky. And this is where I caught, my brain got caught. Because for me, I'm done. I'm done. Not hard. I'm done. I got IIS. I got PowerShell Web Access. I got my own website with an app pool of permissions. And if I run this just as is, it's almost going to work. Here's what I mean by almost. And this is where my brain, the customer had to get me past my own brain. This makes the website, but there's something missing. I don't know if you've set up PowerShell Web Access, but what happens is, is once it's all done, you can't use it <clears throat> until you give it authorization rules. Now, a lot of people do that cheesy thing, right? Star, 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 because you got to give it a user, what computers you can remote to, and what configs you want. And it'll go star, star, star. I'm a web guy. I don't like that. I like granular things. I like to say who and what you're going to be doing. But in my brain, that's an ongoing management task, right? That's a security management task. So initially, I did this, and I was happy. Because somebody behind the scenes will go through PowerShell remoting, run the authorization rules, they'll change the authorization rules. This is an ongoing thing. So I talked to the customer and they said, well, what about the authorization rules? And I said, well, that's just something you just, just run the commandment, man. Just use PowerShell remoting, just go run, the, not a big deal. Just like you do any other permission setting. Customer said, that doesn't work for us. Why doesn't that work for you? Well, here's the problem. People screw with the permissions. Yeah, people screw it. And there are certain groups we want to make sure if somebody screws with the permissions, that group gets put back in. I didn't think about it that way. So now, here's what I needed to do. I needed to write a DSE config that included the authorization rules. Oops. Ain't no resources for that. <laughs> Damn it. I was so happy. I was so, because I was, I, was, I was done. I was so happy. I just needed some rules. That resource doesn't exist. And that's what I'm here to show you. This is where my brain went, I need a resource. I don't have a resource. What would you do? Call Dave White. Call Dave White. <laughs> <laughs> Keep searching on Twitter. So if you're working on a config and you don't have a resource, who here knows PowerShell? Who here knows how to automate stuff in PowerShell? What's a resource? What's a resource? PowerShell. It's, a it's your automation, all packaged up real pretty, so we can use it in DSE. I'm thinking to myself, I sit there going, well, wait a minute, there's no resource for this, but you know what? I'm a web guy. I'm a PowerShell guy. I know how to automate this. In fact, it's just one command like command that already exists. I don't even have to work that hard. So why don't I write my own custom resource? How many of you here have written a custom resource? Is it because you're scared? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> why haven't you written a custom resource? 
even to try it. He, I got to tell you why I hadn't for a long time. You guys remember when 4.0 came out? Kenneth Hansen, Jeffrey Stover at TechEd doing this big demonstration, make it so. I didn't run out and write a custom resource. I was scared to write a custom resource because that's what developers do. Even though they made it pretty you know, clear cut, there's a, a, a resource designer that you can use to help you out, but I was scared. I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna tackle that because I wasn't ready to tackle that. You know what my problem was? I was scared and I was letting that affect my judgment. Because here's what it turns out. Writing a custom resource, I can do it. Guess what that means? You can do it. Oh yeah, you can do it much <laughs> probably better than I can. In other words, I'm an IT guy that has learned to develop enough that it's, writing custom resource isn't that hard. Have you guys looked at the new class-based custom resources? That's even easier. I didn't believe that either. As a matter of fact, I was, it's really cool PowerShell's getting classes. I don't know why it's cool, but it's really cool. They tell me it's for custom resource. It's really cool. Yeah, I, that's dev, that's dev, that's dev. I'm not a, well, wait a minute. Yeah, I am a, I'm becoming, I am a, yeah. You're a hobbit. I'm a hobbit. <laughs> I should be able to do a class-based custom resource, and I've been told that it's easier. You know what? It's a lot easier. It's so easy that I just have a template now. I just bang stuff into. I don't do it the old-fashioned way at all. The old-fashioned ones I wrote are now all class-based because it's not that hard. Everybody can learn to do this. And so here's what I did. I sat down and I said, I need to run an authorization rule. Therefore, I need my own custom resource. You want to see my custom resource? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, don't laugh, okay? <laughs> I was really, and I have to tell you, this only took me 15 minutes to write the custom resource. It took me 15 minutes just to get my brain all organized for the class-based stuff. Here's the deal. It took me an hour and a half to test it, right? To make sure that it was working the way it's supposed to. But it worked. Um, and it, here's the cool part about it. Um, let me, uh, Did you use Pester? <laughs> no, but I am going to now. <laughs> I know, I gotta call Dave. Next session. So, I, and guys, I actually have on, 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 on Wednesday, I'm doing a, a best practice. I have another version of this, because this is still a work in progress. I have another version of this that's laid out structurally more correct. Right now, I was in the process of just trying to get this to work. So I don't have all of the folders under here that I should. I don't have the help files that I should. I don't have the examples that I should. But on Wednesday, I'll give you a copy that does. Also, this is a work in progress. This adds authorization rules. It doesn't get rid of authorization rules. So this is something that is kind of a work in progress. And so what I did is literally I just sat down and, oh, let me open it this way. And I made a class base. So I gave him a name. And then I gave him, if you've done a custom resource, you have to do your properties. But look, I can just do them right in here. Right in here. Nothing, nothing special. And then you got to have get, set, and test. My get actually works. And I have to tell you, that was a big deal to me. The get, when you do get DSE configuration, it should dump out whatever's there. And it works. It really does. The hardest part for me mentally was this. See how it says dollar sign this dot? In my brain, I'm an IT guy. What the hell is this? I don't get it. I actually had to have him explain it to me during the DSC MBA videos when we did the classes stuff. Explain this. I don't get this. It's this instance of that object. Oh, so if I want to reference a variable that I want or a method or a property that I want, it's this object and then that property or that method or the variable that's in there. So it's almost like dot underscore? I mean dollar underscore? Yeah, but see my brain well, wasn't there. So if I would have put dollar underscore, it would have been the same, or no? No, so it, 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 this. The, you, in this case, it needs to be this. <laughs> so dollar, sort, dollar sign underscore is the current object in the pipeline. Right. Dollar sign this is the current object that you're working on. But and I think no, people just do no the pipeline. same thing. 
Well, that's in the pipeline. That's, that's right. People use this in the pipeline. I'm like, what the heck? That's the only reason. I, oh, I see. I, that I where they use exactly this in the pipeline? Yeah. Because I've seen people do that. I'm like, what the heck is yeah. that? Yeah. In which case, that's similar to dollar sign. I mean, that's dollar sign underscore. This though is not. You couldn't use dollar sign underscore. Yeah, if you see it in the pipeline, then you're you're looking at a bug. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't think we supported that. No, it's dollar sign. You should go back to them and let them know that their codes are wrong. It won't always work. That's not the good thing. But what you do see it no, is it in the formatting and output when you can do script properties. Yeah. Okay. That's very similar, where you're basically adding methods and properties to a formatting and output object. In that case, you use dollar this dot because it's really referring to the current object rather mm. than the current pipeline item. Yeah, you can do that with add member in a pipeline expression, and that's where I've seen dollar okay. this. Yeah. So it's not really a bug there because it's the same thing. You're you do with like a script method and that kind of thing you see right. it in. Yeah. So guys, here's the actual set. It's one line of code because I already have a commandlet, right? I know that the box that has PowerShell Web Access is going to have the commandlet add PSWA authorization role. <clears throat> so the code here is really simple. Now my test is a little bit more complicated. I got to test to make sure that whatever I want. Now what I'm going to pass is the group that I want and I'll pass what computers they have access to. And I'll be honest with you, I, uh, uh, for configuration, I'll pass whatever configuration. I'm just going to pass star right now. I didn't write any uh, unique configurations. And I'm going to pass a rule name. That's what I'm going to test for, that rule name, and then to make sure that the correct users and computers have been assigned. So when I go down here to the test, I kept it really simple. I could make this more elaborate, but first of all, I get the rule if it's there. And then I had to play with the, the, the computer name. One of the things that's funny is when you do an authorization rule and you give it what computers you want people to be able to remote to. So I put in s1.company.pri. When you look at that object's properties, when you create the rule, it gives the domain company slash s1. You never get the actual name that you put in. It gives you the, the name that it got from Active Directory. So here's the thing, if you want to verify that the computers are set correctly, you have to play a little name game. And so what I did is I pulled a little name game. Um, I just took the domain parameter, which I'm going to pass to it. What is your domain? Like company. And then the computer name, and then I replaced company.pri that this gave it with nothing so that it was company slash. Oh, come on. I was so happy with that because I, I figured out how to do that. Um, so. I know you kind of go, oh, that was easy, but yeah. Um, and so remember, your test, you've got to return true or false. And so if the rule is there, we're good. If it's not, then we're going to go do that set and create that rule. We good? Not too bad, right? Not, not too bad. Um, so that's what I have in the config. Those are the parameters I created for it, and I just filled them in. I could have passed them as configuration parameters. You know, I, I could have passed them, but I just hard-coded it for right now. Um, and, well, do you want to see it run? Yeah, sure. Yes. I want to see it run, too. So here, here's it, down here. I want to see if it works. Um, I'm going to uh, go to the uh, certificate store on uh, the S1 computer, and I'm going to grab that thumbprint, right? We need the thumbprint for the secured website. Um, then here's I'm going to run the config node to S1. I'm going to give it its website name, uh, PSWA, the name of the app pool I want. I was like underscore pool for my app pools, everybody in the pool that way. And I'm running command, command, you know, websites that I can tell the difference between the. Just thought, anyways, <laughs> thumbprint, and then it'll output it to a, a directory, and then um, we'll run the uh, config. So let's see what happens. This will, if it works, will take a, a few minutes to run. If it doesn't work, it'll fail really fast. Now, something you're going to see is interesting, especially when it gets to my custom resources of all the things it's got to load to run that custom resource, but. Um, this is a great time to ask questions or make comments. So, sir, Go ahead. Uh, in your custom resource, uh, you're passing the FQDN for the computer and then just stripping off the domain name. In the but in the resource. config, in the config, I'm putting in the FQDN of the computer name. Yeah. And that custom resource then has to strip it off when it does its when it when it grabs the object oh, to actually, test it. It has okay. to strip it off. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Because when it does it, when it looks at the what it gets from the object, the property is domain slash computer name without all of that. Gotcha. Um, and you can change the path to your set of the C, W, W, root, whatever. You can change the physical path for the 
PSWA website? You can, uh, well, here's the thing, and I've done this a couple of times. You can move that website to a different path. I don't like to move it though, because when we get updates and stuff, if that gets updated, it's gonna get updated in the wrong place. So I actually like to leave it where it is, okay. uh, personally. Um, that way I'm not screwing with the Microsoft stuff. Um, so at any rate, this thing's kind of running. Oh, sir. How did you get to search at the store? Ah, I used cert util. Was, uh, I started off by running, uh, I just uh, copied it over to the machine and ran cert util to get it in. Now I'm gonna write, and I'm sure other people are too, um, certificate management with DSC. Um, but that wasn't part of this particular problem, so I just blasted it out that way. How are you handling the off? Are you running Windows off with that? I, I, on your website. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, now you just negotiate with that? Uh, actually, it's coming up with um, the, the default, which it, I am leaving it at Windows off right now. Yeah. However, in real life, I would switch it to basic. Okay. Because we're going to do it across the web. Okay. And this is going to be a, a uh, like a self-service portal, mm -hmm. and PWA is a part of that portal. So I'm going to use basic auth and have the certificate, you know, give us SSL over that basic auth. So yeah. 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 And oh, oh my gosh, it's done. Cool. Well, well wait a minute, don't clap yet. What? what? No red. You don't know if it work. <laughs> no red. No red. Well, yeah, no red. But. <laughs> um, we don't know if it works, so here, let's let's try this. Let's try this. Let's um, and I then I have to show you something that I didn't want to show you, but I'm going to show you. Um, let me go down here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, Internet Explorer and go to that website and see if it works. Ready? Yeah. Are you excited? Okay. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. We got a web page. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know if I can get signed in. Yeah. Um, so let's see if we uh, if I can get signed in. And now I gave it permissions to go to S1. Let's go ahead and try to see if S1 works. And if I go, if I sign out, try to go to like DC, it's not going to let me in because that's not part of the authorization rule. If I go out and delete an author, the authorization rule, if I delete any of the IIS components that are mandatory by that configuration, it fixes itself. You just connected to some machine, type hostname. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so, hostname. Boom. Hey. 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 Now I need to tell you something that I didn't want to tell you. Everything works magnificently. Here's what I mean by that. When you're doing a configuration, you're going to run test DSE config, see whether it's in its desired state or not. <clears throat> you can do get DSE config to see what it's, it, it has right now. Those don't currently work on my box. Here's why. Everything is perfect. My custom resource works perfectly. My config works perfectly. That NTFS permission resource doesn't. <laughs> so what happens is if I do get DSE config, I get nasty red stuff. If I take that resource out, and if you take this code and you play with it, if you take the NTFS resource out, everything will work just as you expect it to when you're testing it and, and working with it. I'm working on fixing that NTFS permission ones, and we'll put it up in the community site as soon as I get the author's permission. Um, but I, I'm, I'm fixing that. He has some problems in his get, some, some issues like that. Is the reason it's giving the errors because of like, bugs in the code or because of the code? Bugs in that custom resource. Yeah, he's got some errors in his get, and there's also some mistakes in the set that I have to fix um, on his. And his is a, it's the old style resource, it's not class-based. So I'm thinking I'm just going to rewrite the whole thing class-based. But we can write our resources on our own and you know, without getting them certified or into the community. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like absolutely, absolutely. Because I sat down and banged out that resource. I mean, like I said, in 15 minutes, I had that thing from start to finish done. And then I just had to test it. And I, I didn't need anybody's approval. I just made it and went. And, and I was very happy because at that point, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be great well, as you're fixing it to blog the, the changes that you make, so the problems that were the bugs in the code yeah, and the approach that you used to fix them. 
yeah, you know, the thing is, I don't like people, and I don't like talking to people, so I don't want to go out and help anybody. <laughs> uh, no, that's actually... <laughs> yeah, because going through no, that process fair. would be really great to hear about. Yeah, and, and the, the interesting thing is, is, is me working with my own mind, right? And, and, and I will blog this uh, as I go through and fix those other ones. And as I continue, it was me working with my own mind to see how I, as an IT guy, was thinking about this. And here's the beauty of it. From the beginning of the configuration, right up to me doing my own custom resource, my brain went along the path just like it should have. In other words, oh, I know how to do this, right? So I, I'll do Windows feature, do this, 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 this. Oh, I need to be able to do something that I, I, don't, I don't have a resource for. Well, let's go out to the community for the web administration resource. And I'll do my websites. Oh, great, we got a resource. That, and then I hit the point of, oh, there's no resource for the authorization rules. No, no worries, make my own. And I made my own and you know, I'm, I'm an IT guy that now is, has development skills and I solved the customer's problem is really the most important thing. Are you gonna put the uh, development in Git? Because with Git, you can have the community help you. Ooh, you know what, that's a great idea. Um, that's what I'll do. <coughs> Um, that's a great idea. That's so I'll put both. Practice. Yeah, I, I, the, the, ooh, I, I'll, I'll add that to the best practice discussion. And, and repeat it for the recording. Oh, and, and where should we put our resources for, for development? Um, yeah. We should put them on, on Get so that the entire community can. What do you say? Get them. Yes. That's all I got. But I, I, I really, really, for me, this was one of those moments where I had gone from start to finish to solve a problem. And I had exercised all of my skills and learned a lot of new skills and, went, and it did everything, including a custom resource, and it just happened to work that it works exactly as it should, even for an IT guy that's learning to be more of a developer. Yeah? So I was pretty impressed. I was pretty happy at the end result. So was the customer, by the way. So it's kind of cool. That's all I got. So ask questions or whatever. You got it 10 minutes. Does it actually work? Like you're going to show the dumb admin screwing things up and then. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Way too many rights. So, so let's do this. Let's, let's, let's go over and here's, here's S1. Let me, let me maximize this little duder. And. What was your LCM config? Um, um, it's 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 really the uh, default, except that I added the uh, debug uh, debug mode okay. when I was in it's development. Fine. Yeah, yeah, and I've got, oh, I did change it from the default. I, I did set it to apply and autocorrect, so well, let's go screw something up. Let's uh, kill off the authorization rule, yeah? So let's do this, let's do get PSWA authorization rule. There's that rule it created. We can add a bunch of them, we can do all kinds of stuff, but let's just remove this. So, so it's gone. Well, now we have to wait, right, for the... No, 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 try, try and access. You don't know it's actually missing, do you? <sighs> oh, man, you guys are cold, man. That's okay. Let's try to access it now. Oh, come on. Don't argue with me. Just do, do what I say. Okay, you're not going to do what you I say. Uh, so, company, administrator. Oops. S one. Wah wah. Oh. Oh. Sad trombone. Sad trombone. <laughs> so let's um, let's cancel on this one. Let's go back to here. Um, where's my little uh, config? Let's just. Uh, I've got dash force on this, so he'll um, force him to run. So let's just do 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 do. And by the way, now you'll see it's just. Uh, it'll just go through because all of the uh, tests, it'll now skip the sets for because everything's there except for the rule. So at the very bottom, it should hit the rule and redo it. So when you're configuring the, uh, the virtual directory or the application that you're going to use, is there any way for you to um, not care about the directory structure? Because we have, I have continuous integration that changes the directory structure every time I, I that don't the understand. deployment happens. I don't understand. So I'm using a product called Octopus Deploy. Oh, okay. And what it does is it actually lays the code down and it'll put whatever the version number of the code is. And I want, what, what I want to do is have DSC initially create everything. 
and then Octopus and Floyd will come in after the fact and push new bits as developers write new stuff. I think you probably want to do the, and, and believe me, you're surrounded by much smarter people than I am, but I think you want to kind of change that process the other way. Have, have Octopus actually put your stuff out and then you set that directory, because you can ask for what well, that directory is. it actually is. does it for you with the product. The product does it. Well, but that's kind of what I'm saying, because if you don't know the directory, I'm not sure how you're going to tell the well, config. the directory is, is a form of the NuGet package, right? So the NuGet package is, I don't know, mozu.com, which is the company, one of the companies I work for, is the, one of the sites I work for, administer, whatever you want. Do you know what the, 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 the final directory is going to be when it's yes, done it's, for it? Uh, yes, what it does is it explodes the package, whatever the name of the package is, mm -hmm. not whatever the version number is, and, and makes that directory. Well, when you, when you create the website, you have to give it what its physical path is going to be. It could be a network drive. It doesn't care. So if you want to have a mapping set up instead, so you can change that path whenever you want and the drive letter never changes, you can do that rather than doing a physical path. But the website's got to have its physical path. So does Octopus deploy then update the IIS? Every time you do a new deployment, it'll actually touch that IIS site and update it with the next version, version new get path. So I wondered if there was a way that you could just say, don't, I mean, we could initially set it, right? But I don't want it to come back and update it because there'll be a new deployment with the new site there. See, the problem is, is that that's not really a DSC issue, that's an IIS issue. I'm sorry? But it's not a DSC issue, it's, a, it's an IIS issue. In other words, it's, the website needs to know its physical path. And the app pool must have permissions to push the path. Yeah. So That's if it changes, part of the continuous integration, yeah. the product actually pushes it out there, pushes mm -hmm. the package out there, updates the virtual directory, and then goes on. That's yeah, part is, of the regular. This is the classic competing controller problem. Mm -hmm. We have two two products that right. want to control the same entity. <clears throat> so it sounds like what you need to do is to do after you do the initial setup, right. to then just, I don't know if you can do it, uh, that resource, not specify the directory name. Then, you know, you'll do a test to make sure it's there, et cetera. But, yeah. You understand what I mean, though, right? <coughs> yeah. She said the directory yeah. name in a file, and then do a get content of the file each time. Yeah. yeah, you come up with a trick like that. Yeah. Or can you ask IIS what's the current path of use with this website? Well, you, that'll give you the current path, but he's saying that the path's going to get changed during the update. Yeah, so you need to get the new well, path the and right get it into IIS. Push it out whenever they yeah. want, right? Create a custom resource that reads the new path and rewrites the config. Mm. You might be able to have also the resource look for the latest directory, or even by version number or by date time, okay, and then work. use that yeah. as the base, and then everything mm. else would apply to that. But yeah, that's the answer. You yeah. Need to do a different resource that. Okay. That is aware of octopus's semantics. Okay. That would work. So you guys want to see if it fixed itself? Yeah. Here we go. Woo! Yowza! <laughs> I don't know where we're going to host the code, but I'll put the code up. I'm also going to put an updated version of that's that has all the help and all that kind of stuff in it uh, on, on Wednesday. Yeah. And, sir. Do it as a module. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, Marshall Gallery. You so know. we did with the MVA. You know, I was thinking about that, but I was kind of. Yes. Yeah. You want it? Sure. I'll put it up on there's a module there because that, that would be, well, it would be almost my official first published module after the MBA one. So you need well, to parameterize. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah. I, I, matter of fact, I, I was going to do that. Um, I just, you know, when I was doing the uh, test for it, I didn't. But yeah, the whole domain thing has to be completely parameterized. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's all we got. So you've got other shows today and things like that and. Feel free to hang out and ask questions. The next speaker, uh, I'm supposed to push the button when everybody says I can shut up, so. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. So I'm going to push the button.